for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the, with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and he shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty there, was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hands be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then were passed by Midian, then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they bought Joseph, they brought Joseph into Egypt. So we will just stop right there. Praise oh. the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you so much, Minister Trisha. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we bless you, we honor you, we glorify your name. Thank you, Lord, for your word that you have given. Thank you, Lord, that it is life and it's light. Thank you, Lord, that it is because of what you've done for us that we are able to be here today. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Lord, as you've given this word, hide me behind the cross. Hide me, Lord. Let no flesh glory in your presence. Father, I pray that every word will touch each and every person. It will go out and do that which 
the word is supposed to do. Father, we thank you. We honor your great name. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you have given me, O oh God. Lord, I will not take it lightly. I will not take it lightly. I humble myself before you. And I give you praise, thanks, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. I'd like to give thanks to Apostle Stephen for the opportunity to share with you today. As he mentioned yesterday, we were away and the Lord worked amazingly. So we are very grateful for what God is doing. Once again, thank you so much, Minister Trisha. Thank you so very much. Thank you for reading that passage of scripture. Praise the name of Jesus. This, praise the Lord. This scripture is um, a very familiar scripture, but before I would just like to begin, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this song, I Cannot Be I Go For Jesus Say Go. Never, okay, I will begin and then you can. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I cannot be idle for Jesus say go and work in my harvest today and then at the evening when labor is done whatever is right I will pay then away to the work I will go and join in the reaping of grace and back from the harvest with beautiful sheaves I come with rejoicing again I cannot be idle for Jesus say go for numberless sheaves will be lost they perish for wants of more reapers to save how awful to think of the cost then away Come with rejoicing again. Then away to the work I will go and join in the reaping of grace. And back from the harvest with beautiful sheep, I come. I come with rejoicing again. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you so much. Bless the name of the Lord. For a title. The title I would like to give you today. Says come. I will send you to them. Here I am. The main title is the character of the chosen. I'd like to repeat that. The character of the chosen. As you've heard, Minister Trisha read Genesis 37. And this is a very familiar scripture. The story, the account of Joseph. It goes all the way from, it begins in Genesis 37. Then from Genesis 37... It goes, it skipped to 39, 
and then all the way to 50. Praise the name of Jesus. So I'm going to go step by step. And I'm going to go through this. Praise the name of Jesus. One of the points I want to begin by draw out. It says, then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said, here I am. Then he said to him, please go and see if it is well with your brothers and the flocks and bring back word to me. Bring back word to me. Now, based on what we've read and you've heard it, you've read it yourself. We see that Joseph's brother were upset at him. They were upset with him. The Bible tells us that as they see him coming, they said, here comes the dreamer. We will see what will happen to him and his dream. Then they conspired to kill him. They decided that they're going to kill him. What was so special about Joseph? What was so special? He was obedient. Obedient. I will tell you one thing. If I know someone has issues with me, like I understand he was obedient to his father. But I would probably turn to my father and I would say, you know they don't like me. Uh, why are you sending me to them? But he never asked a question. Instead, he said, here I am. He was obedient. He did not refuse his father. Even though he knew how his brothers hated him. Yet he did not refuse his father. He said, here I am. In Genesis 37 and verse 18. The Bible reads, now when they saw him afar off. Even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said one to another, look at this dreamer. He's coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him. My God. And cast him into some pit. And we shall say, as I said earlier, what will become of his dream? And they said, we shall say some, some beasts have devoured him. My God. Point. They wanted to destroy his destiny. But who knows that man does not give destiny. It is God who give destiny. And if God give destiny, man cannot destroy it. They can put you down. They can throw you down in the pit as they did. But who knows that they cannot kill what God aspired to live. Hallelujah. They throw him into the pit. And then they sat down and eat a meal. When I saw this in the scripture, I was, I've read this story many times. But I did not realize that they actually sat and ate after they threw him down into the pit. He had some very callous brothers. <laughs> after they did that, they saw the Ishmaelites when his brother came back. And they pulled him out. And they sold him. To the Ishmaelite. Joseph was sent to his brothers first. He was sent to them by his father. He had the heart for his brother. But they hated him. What was so special about Joseph? I ask again. He was devoted 
to his father. He was devoted to what he's supposed to do. We see as the Bible accounts, the Ishmaelites bought him and they took him to Egypt. And in Egypt, they sold him to Potiphar. And in Potiphar's house, we see that he prospered. We see that he did so well, so, so well, that the Bible records Potiphar put him in charge of his entire household. The only thing he was not in charge of is what he put in his mouth. My God, the Bible records that he prospered. And Potiphar saw that the Lord was with him. Then it came that Potiphar's wife, the Bible said, began to look at him because he was very handsome. And as she kept looking at him day after day, she kept asking him, lie with me, lie with me. And he refused. And she did it day after day after day. But he still refused. How many person could refuse? The first thing Joseph said to her, he said, my master put me in charge of everything. The only thing that he kept from me is you because you're his wife. And he said these words. Joseph did not look and said, where was this God when I was thrown in the pit? Where was this God when my brother was conspiring to kill me? But listen to the word of the chosen. Listen to the characteristic of someone who is sold out for God. He said these words. He said, how can I do this wickedness? He called the lure and the enticement of Potiphar's wife wickedness. He said, how can I do this and sin against my God? Just imagine. He was 17 years old because the scripture opens and told you his age. He was so young. He could have looked, he could have been Peter could have said, look at what's happening to me. I'm in the pit. Then they pulled me out. They sold me from the pit. They sold me. Here I am in this house. I'm doing well. I'm thriving. And then next thing, this woman is lusting after me. And because I refuse, look at what's happening to me. And party for us, the Bible reads, put him in the jail. Because the wife accused him. Because he ran away and she, he ran because... She tried to grab him and he ran away leaving his coat in her hand. And that's what she used as an evidence against him to say, the Hebrew you brought in my house has come to mock me. She called the other workers and she lied. And she lied the same to her husband. But there's something that amazed me about Potiphar. The Bible said, Potiphar saw that the Lord was with him. Because while Joseph was in his house, he prospered. Then one would ask the question, why did he believe? Why did he believe after all this time Joseph would do such thing? But the Bible said, she lied about him and he was cast into jail. But how many of you know that it doesn't matter the plan the enemy has. God have a greater plan. And when the enemy says down, God says no. I am the author and finisher of your fate. I have your destiny in my hand. All you have to do is believe in me. No matter how the situation look. No matter how you, 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 what's happening to you. Believe and trust me. All things work together for the good. To those who love the Lord. And are the called according to his purpose. The Lord blessed all in that house for Joseph's sake. Can you imagine 
How could he have that strength? But we are seeing something amazing. And this is the fulfillment of even the scripture that Jesus said, Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Joseph knew who was in him. Despite what happened and the circumstance. Mighty God. What was so special about Joseph? He was devoted to God. He was devoted to God. He did not pay attention to what he was happening. He was devoted. God was more real to him more than anything else. He was more real. Because when his, his father, he, he got his father sent him and he got pulled away from his family. He got sold because of his brothers and he knew who he had. He had God. Praise the name of Jesus. What am I trying to say to you today? Don't worry about who is against you. Don't worry about who is not for you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus being true all. The Bible said he was tested at all points. And for every way of temptation, he make a way of escape. That's why the Bible could tell us that we can get drawn away by our own lust. That's what we get drawn away. Jesus equipped the called. One man put it this way. He doesn't call the qualified, but he qualified the called. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus trained us. We are trained by the word of God. We are outfitted by the word of God. And we are prepared by the word of God. In Matthew 10 and verse 1, the Bible reads... And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. In Matthew 10, 16, Jesus said, Behold, I sent you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise, as a serpent and harmless as a dove. No matter what we are going through, no matter what you're going through, Jesus is telling us, I have equipped you. I have prepared you. I have fortified you. You have my word that is light and life. When the Lord is with you, he will cause Ishmaelites to see value in you. Hallelujah. When the Lord is with you, he will cause your slave master to favor you. Hallelujah. When the Lord is with you, he will cause your jailer to promote you. We know from the story that Joseph in the jail, he was put in charge of all the prisoners. And he prospered. And as the story goes, there were two of Pharaoh's workers. One a baker and one a cupbearer. And as they gave, they were troubled because they had a dream. And as they gave their dream, Joseph interpreted their dream. And when he interpreted their dream, he told them to remember him. But they did not remember. He still languished in that jail. Two more years. They did not remember and as the time go by, and Pharaoh had this dream, then the cupbearer remembered. And he said, when I was in jail, there was a young Hebrew, and he interpreted my dream, and the same for the baker. And what he interpreted, the same thing happened. He said, what he interpreted, it happened. And Pharaoh sent for him. And the Bible records that he cleaned up himself and he went to Pharaoh. 
And as he told Pharaoh the interpretation of his dream. And he said to Pharaoh that the dreams that he had. The seven years of plentiful. And there will be seven years of famine. And he told Pharaoh how to prepare. And get someone to be in charge. And Pharaoh said to him. Before all the people gathered. He said there's not a man. With the spirit of God inside him. And so what did Pharaoh do? Pharaoh clothed him. Pharaoh put, took his ring off and put it on his finger. So the coat that was missing from his, his, brother, his brethren. Who put blood on it to tell the father that he died by beast. And the wand that Potiphar's wife took. Now he has a cloth on. And now he's seated in the seat of power. Only person was greater to Pharaoh, was greater was Pharaoh than he was. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible said the spirit of God will lift up a standard. We see that, he, that, that because of God's favor on his life, even though he was in jail. He was promoted. So when God is for you, he will cause your jailer to promote you. When God is for you, your platform that once put you in a situation can put you in liberation. When the Lord is with you, what once caused jealousy and envy will make room for you. The dream of, of Joseph caused jealousy and envy because the Bible said and his brethren envied him when he told the dream. But now that same dream, because now he interprets, it make room for him. The enemy wants us to abort our destiny by taking our future in our own hands. He wants us to hold on to offense. He wants us to pay attention to whatever happened to us. What happened in our lives. He wants us in bitterness. He wants us in unforgiveness. He wants us in anger. He wants us in malice. He wants us biting. He wants us gossiping. But who knows that once you start this, it's a downward spiral. Do you know that every time... That God allow you to be put down. To be oppressed. It is for your advancement. Joseph had no idea. That from the pit one day he would be in the palace. His put down was for his advancement. His trials was for his lifting. Praise the Lord. Don't give up. On your destiny. Those who hate you. And fight you. They are seeing something in you. That they don't have. The Bible said they envied him. Because they see something in him. Think of the words of his brothers. These are his brothers. The words they used. They said we will see what will become. Of his dreams. They see something. In him that they didn't have. Remember the words of the Bible again. It says they envied him. They called him the dreamer. Because they themselves had no dreams. So they wanted to kill his dream. Don't be surprised if someone is saying things about you. But trust in the Lord. And be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. He shall lift you up. When others put you down. He shall lift you. When you're rejected. He shall lift you. When you're not accepted. He calls you beloved. He said I send my spirit. To comfort you. He comforts those. That he called. He comforts those. That he chose. He comforts those that he anoints and he make a way for them. 
Praise the name of Jesus. When you suffer long, you're building your character. Do you want to have credentials with no potentials? Jesus endures the cross for us all. Your shame is on him. Your pain is on him. Your rejection is on him. That's why the Bible said he was despised and rejected. And he made himself of no reputation, even to the death of the cross. He was betrayed. So no marvel if you will be betrayed. Cast every cares upon him. Cast it all on him. He said he cares for you. Joseph could have been, as I said earlier, been offended. He could have been very bitter. But Joseph, he went through the school of offense. He went through the school of offense. And he passed with flying colors. Do you know how many people are walking around offended? They're walking around offended. And from offense, it leads to unforgiveness. From unforgiveness to bitterness. From bitterness to malice. From malice to speaking unkindly about one another. They forgot about the love of God. His brothers add to betray him. They had to. They betrayed him with no reason. He did not do them anything. He just told his dream. He had to learn to forgive his brothers. Hallelujah. He had to learn to forgive his brothers. We must learn to forgive those who have hurt us. We have to learn to forgive those who talk badly about us. We have to learn to forgive those who put us down. We have to learn to forgive those who doesn't want nothing to do with us. And we have to remember, if God be for us, who can be against us? What if he had not forgiven his brothers? He could have killed them when he got into power. He was second in command in Egypt. There was none greater than him except Pharaoh. What if he had decided to kill, kill them? He had the platform. He had the position. He had the prestige and the power to do so. Remember, he went through the four P's. He was put in the pit, from the pit to Potiphar's house, from Potiphar's house to the prison, from the prison to the palace. And now he has the position, the platform. From the pit, he was raised up on a platform. From the Potiphar's house, he earned his position there. And in the prison, even though he was in prison, he had prestige. And from the prison, he got power as he interprets Pharaoh's dream. He recognized them, his brethren. Isn't that amazing? He recognized them, but they did not recognize them. When they came to Egypt to buy corn, they did not know who he was. But he recognized them right away. They thought they had killed his dream. Long dead gone. Remember what they said. We will see what will become of his dreams. So they thought it was long dead and gone. Joseph journeyed from the pit to Potiphar's house. As I said. And from the prison to the palace. I would like to tell you today, every betrayal is for your appraisal. Every betrayal is for your appraisal. What is an appraisal? Appraisal give value. He might have not been valuable or might be nothing to his brother, but the Ishmaelites see value in him. They paid 20 pieces of silver for him. 
Every rejection will bring you new attention. Every person that has ever rejected you, they are making way for those to come in your life and give you new attention. They're making way for God to smile upon you. For God to look down on you and give you his undivided attention. Every adversity is for your gratuity. Every adversity is for your gratuity. Hallelujah. Every sifting is for your lifting. Every sifting is for your lifting. Don't forget... There's an account in the Bible. The Bible said, Jesus told Peter, the enemy desired to sift you, but I have prayed for you. Don't worry who wants to sift you. The master has prayed for you. He's interceding for those who are his night and day, day and night. And he's seated at the right hand hand of the father the bible said we are joint tears with him for those who are his praise the name of jesus every trial is for your triumph every trial is for your triumph every test is for your testimony Every test is for your testimony. Joseph was hurt very deeply by what happened to him. The Bible said when he, his brethren came and when he hugged them and told them, I am Joseph, because they did not recognize him. The Bible said he cried so greatly. He cried that they heard him in all the house. His cry was so great because of all that pain. But he did not bury that pain and package it to teach his brothers a lesson. What did he say to them instead? He said, the Lord allow this for me to save lives. My God. The character of the chosen. Mighty God. How could he. After what they've done. But because the love of God is in him. It was not his love. But it's the love of God. So rich and poor. Hallelujah to the love of God. The love of God. Was in him. Every test. Is for your testimony. Every setback. Is for your comeback. Every setback is for your comeback. Hallelujah. Remember, God sees and He knows. God understands the pain. He is not slack to His promise. So, whatever He promised you, He will bring it to pass. Don't look on what you see. Look through the eyes of the spirit. As I said earlier, Joseph had no idea that from the pit one day would be in a palace. He had a dream, but he didn't know what was going to entail in the middle. He didn't know he was going to be in jail for so many years. He didn't know he was going to be accused. He didn't know he would have been lied upon. He did not know that he would have been rejected. He didn't know he would have been betrayed. But that path brought him to greatness. And not just greatness. Lives were saved. I want to encourage you today. It doesn't matter who tells you you're not good enough. It doesn't matter who have rejected you. It doesn't matter who have put you down. They have not the final say on your destiny. Trust in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Because no matter what, he will lift you up out of 
your situation. No matter how it seems, Joseph prosper. Most people would be in jail. They, were, they would be so bitter. They would be so angry. They would be complaining. They would not see. But he sees through the eyes of the Lord. Today I want to encourage you. See through the eyes of the master. See through the eyes of your savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into this world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. There's a reason why God showed it this way. Why the scripture penned it this way. We can all learn from Joseph's life. He was in a strange land. He was in Egypt. He was a youth. He was only 17 years old. But he still trusted in the Lord. And when... He was almost seduced by Potiphar's wife. He was able to say, must I do this? Great wickedness and sin against my God. We can all learn and see what God did for him because he trusted in the Lord. No matter what is happening in your life. No matter who does not care for you once again. Look up. The Lord cares. He really does. He just wants your faith in him. Your trust in him. Your hope in him. Because your comfort will come from him. We all. Have had our share of things that goes away from the path that God planned for us. As Pastor Apostle spoke the other day, he said, The righteous fall seven times, but the Bible says to get up. Don't stay where you are. When you fall, get up. As he was saying, and that don't stay if it's in the mud, you fall. Don't stay and play around in it. Get up. Get up and stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. And do not be entangled in the yoke of bondage. I would like you to carry away today from this lesson, from this message, from this account of Joseph's life. He had every reason to be offended. He had every reason to be bitter. He had every reason to be unforgiven. But he chose to see through God's point of view. He chose to say, I will not turn my back on my God. I will not betray my God. I will still love him. No matter what I'm going through, I will still love him. No matter the pit, I will still love him. No matter the Potiphar's wife, I will still love him. No matter the prison, I will still love him. And like Jesus, the Bible tells us, because he lowered himself, God exalted him and make him king of kings and lord of lord. Because when we allow God to work through our lives and work through our situation, we we can see that he can do we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us we thank God for lessons like this we thank him for how he allow us to be able to read his word so that we can learn from a 17 year old youth who became a 30 year old ruler in Egypt we thank him that he give us his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord.
Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His only name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, yes. Oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Stand with me, please. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, the Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, yes, worship his holy name. Name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, yeah, the above all sire, oh my Let me just tell you something. There are many people who are rejected, who did not have any choice in the family they were born into, who did not have any choice over their parents, who did not have any choice over the community they are from. But I want to tell you something today. When our four parents, Adam and Eve, when they said these words, we were afraid and we hid ourselves. The Lord said, and they said they were naked. The Lord said, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? And to show you how he see them, he clothed them. He clothed them. When father and mother forsake you, the Lord will take you up. Yeah, he will lift you out of your pit. It doesn't matter what they say about you. He will restore you. Love you just like that. Let's sing it. Bless the Lord. Bless him. Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. If the enemy didn't see how great your future will be, he would not fight you like that. He fight Joseph and he put him down into the pit 
because he sees the greatness of his future. Second in command to Pharaoh, he sees the greatness of his future. And that's why he did that what he did. If he did not see what God has for your future, he would not fight you. Never before, oh my soul, I will worship his holy Bless the Lord. Look on Jesus and sing it. No matter who is not liking you, no matter who is working against you, no matter who is talking badly about you, no matter who is conspiring to kill you, look on the Lord right now and bless him with both hands up. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, eh, worship is all in it. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I will worship your holy name. One last point before I give the microphone to our apostle. One last point. I want to say something. Never forget that if he did not see greatness in you, he would not fight you so hard. But it's because he knows the great purpose and the great destiny that the Lord has for you. There are many young women they were molested. They were raped. They were beaten. Some of them were beaten by their husbands. Some of them were cast aside. There are many young men who was not accepted by their father. They were thrown. They were treated badly. They were not seen as God sees them. But let me give you something. Let me tell you something from the father of love. It is because... The enemy sees the greatness of your destiny. He knows that when you will give your testimony, like the man at the gathering who was bound, who was bound at the tomb, and then he got delivered by our Lord Jesus. And the Bible records that he was set free that same day. Jesus wants to set you free. He wants to set you free from all the hurt. He wants to set you free from the pain. He wants to say to you today, release the anger. Release the unforgiveness. Release the bitterness. Release, release, release. He desires to set you free. He desires to make a way out of the pit for you. He desired to make a way out of the clutches of Potiphar's wife. He desired to make a way from the prison. And he wants to put you in the palace. Who goes to the palace? King, we are joined here with Jesus. We are joined here. We are seated in heavenly places. Today at the sound of my voice, Take your place where God has placed you. Take your place because Christ in you, you have the hope of glory. Hallelujah. I'll sing one more time. Bless the Lord. He's the lover of our soul. Look on him. Close your eyes as you sing it. You will have a connection. He will do something for you today that no man can do. He will break every chain and he will remove every burden. And don't you worry if you're praying for your loved ones, even if they're against you. Embrace them. Love them. Forgive them. 
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul. I will worship your holy name. Hallelujah, Father. I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me, Lord, to share this word with your people. Father, I pray that you touch every heart. Remove every burden from them, Lord God. Open their eyes. So they can see you. Open their spiritual eyes. Let their fear be unstopped. Show them how much you love them. Show them Lord that they are accepted. They are beloved. And you desire to comfort them. Father I pray in the name of Jesus. That no one will go back out the way they came in. As you've given your servant, oh God, the word. That you will heal and set free today. Lord, I pray. Let your will be done. In the life of your people. As they're blessing you from their soul. 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 Thank you, Father. For the word that you gave. And may, oh God, it sent forth and accomplish what that which you intended. Thank you once again, Lord, that you have allowed me to speak. I give you praise, thanks, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Apostle Stephen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord. More grace. More grace upon your life. More grace in Jesus' name. Can we switch a key, please? Switch a key for... Cantara da seca e da massa, tara massa. More up, more up. More up. Cora baba basanta. I am the God that healed the shaka tara da baka santa. Yes. That healed the. I am the Lord. Your healer, I am the God that healed thee. I am the Lord, your healer. You sent your word. To heal my disease, I am the Lord, your healer. I am the God that healed thee. I am the Lord, your healer. You sent your word to heal my disease. You are the God, my healer. Lift up your hands and say, You are the God that healed thee. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and heal my disease. You are 
Lord, oh Lord, my healer. If you know this song, lift up your hands right now. You are the God that He left in. You are the Lord, my healer. As you sent your word, you heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Play it for me, play it for me. Tonight the Lord wants to heal you. Tonight the Lord wants to heal you. The Lord wants to heal your heart. He wants to heal your wounds. Because He knows what you're going through. He knows what you have been going through. He knows all of your pains. He knows all of your sorrows. Play for the Lord. Play, play. If any of you here tonight that you need healing, you need healing, not just physical healing, but I'm talking about spiritual healing. You need healing in your heart. You need healing in your soul. The altar is open. Please come. The Lord is going to heal you tonight. You are the Lord. You sent your word. 